My name is Jocelyn Sturgis Zachary, and we're here with Mrs. Cleage. I'm sorry, is it Cleage? Or... It's Clegg, like Cle egg. Clegg? Okay, like egg. I do the phone. No so problem. problem. Okay, Clegg. Is this your first time at SSU? Uh, I've been here once before and okay. had a had a really wonderful time. I was it was a while ago. I can't even remember exactly when, but I've been on the campus before and had a great time. So I'm very happy to be back. That's good. Are you glad to be speaking at the University by the Sea? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm glad to be by the Sea. It's such a beautiful campus, <laughs> and it's really this festival is such a wonderful part of of Savannah life. So I'm very happy to be a part of it. Oh, that's interesting. So, how much research do you do for your books and plays? Well, it takes me about a year to write either a, a full-length play or a book. It takes about a year. Mm -hmm. And in that time, I do whatever the research is. Um, I do all that first. Mm -hmm. And then I do a lot of work on the characters. Mm -hmm. um, some people come to their work through the plot. You know, mm -hmm. they, they know who's going to do what and where the chase is going to take place and mm -hmm. all of that. But I really come to it through the characters. So I spend a lot of time, most of my research is trying to figure out who these people are mm -hmm. that I'm going to spend a year with. So it, it's, um, it varies, but the whole process ends up taking about a year. Okay. And would you say that's the hardest thing developing the the characters? Yes, it is because once you can once you really know these people, then the rest of it kind of falls into place. But you have to figure out who the people are first. And I do lots of work. I mean, down to where I know what these people's favorite colors mm -hmm. are. I know what their grandmother did for a living. <laughs> I know all of that because all of these characters start off as me, the writer, trying to pretend to be someone else. So that what you have to do as a writer is to make sure that by the time you actually get this book on paper or get this play on the stage it's not you anymore mm -hmm. it's really Charles or Maria or mm -hmm. Candace or whoever these characters are mm -hmm. so that you have to really do the work to make sure that you're not just pretending that it's somebody else but they really like everything you like they eat everything you eat they're mm -hmm. the same size as you are you have to say no this is someone else so what do they do on their off day you know I even when I'm writing I go through the grocery store for my you know buying food for my family and I think to myself okay what would this character buy you know mm -hmm. would she buy avocados would she buy tomatoes does she hate Mexican food you know what kind of stuff does she eat and the more you know about their personal lives the more the plot that you come up with really grows out of who they are um, you know you can't do something where somebody's really a housebound person stays in the house all the time and then have part of the plot that they ride a motorcycle across town mm -hmm. that would never happen mm -hmm. so that you have to really know the people and then the story kind of emerges from that all right that's interesting so what advice would you give to aspiring writers I think the most important thing is to write every day mm -hmm. and it's really hard I think for for young writers especially when you're in school and you've got writing assignments and books you have to read and all of those things that you must do but the most important thing is to practice and if you do it every day what you find is not only do you get better much faster but you can see the pages mounting you know a lot of times when you start writing you feel like okay unless I have four hours to sit here I shouldn't really waste my time but even if all you have is 20 minutes a day it's really important important to get in the habit of going to the same place if you can sit down in that same place and write for half an hour and just see what happens after a month you would be amazed if you write for half an hour every day how many pages you have at the end of the month so that it encourages you to do more to go on and do more so I think the most important thing is to, to set some time every day when you take your writing seriously and put those words on paper oh, well do you think it's a difference between writing a book and a play like for um, two different platforms? Well, the, the process is the same, but it's very different. I started off writing plays. I'm trained as a playwright so that I have um, the time that I have to write when I'm by myself. Um, but then after that, when you go into rehearsal, you're in with a whole bunch of other people. You've got actors and designers and directors and producers and all of those people with you. When you write a novel, you write it by yourself people read it by themselves. So there isn't that experience that you get in theater where you also have the gifts that the actors bring. You know, if you do it in a novel, you have to make all of those gifts on that page. If you're doing it um, on the stage, then you can write whatever it is and know that you're going to have an actor who is a real live person saying these things, which is, is a great difference between the two. And I find that although I've written books and plays, that plays I really enjoy more mm -hmm. because it's, uh, it's so much more a group effort that we collaborate as artists together for the final product so then I can sit in the back of the house on opening night and watch them and say they got this I can go home mm -hmm. <laughs> this is done now oh that's good so attending colleges such as Howard and Spelman what can you say about the HBCU experience 
Oh, I had a great experience at, at Howard and a great experience at Spelman. And I, I went specifically looking for a black college. Um, I went to school in the mid-60s so that a lot of the bigger northern colleges who had not been very open to black students were opening and consciously trying to recruit us to come to Barnard, come to Vassar, come to Mount Holyoke. And I really did not have an interest in doing that. I wanted to go to an HBCU. I wanted to be around other black students um, who were pursuing their, um, their dreams just like I was. And I had a great time at Howard. Um, when I was at Howard, it was a, a time of great demonstrations and all of that, mm -hmm. so that we could always leave the campus after class, go down, pick at the White House, come back, <laughs> go down, <laughs> protest the war, and come back. So it was a very exciting mm -hmm. time to be a student. Um, when I got to Spelman, um, I had already been in college for three years mm -hmm. so that I understood kind of what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And it was a different kind of experience um, because it was a much smaller campus. Mm -hmm. It was an all woman school, which was very different. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that the, the experience that a, a historically black college can offer is just very unique and it's really wonderful. Um, I couldn't have asked for better education and better lifelong experiences that really have carried me forward. So do you think it has changed over the years from now and being at HBCU? Oh, I think so. I think the world has changed mm -hmm. so that I think, you know, students have changed, people have changed, the way you study, the way you get your information. You know, I mean, I'm of the generation where you go to the library, there's a card catalog, you have to look up the book you want, take the little dusty card to the library and they get the book for you and bring it back. You all can go on a phone and get any information in the world that you want, which is very different in terms of process, but it's also different in how it it trains your mind to, to work. You all work much faster, much faster. You think faster, you draw conclusions much faster. And whether or not that's a good thing, we have to wait another hundred years and see. <laughs> but I think it's, it's very different. But I think these campuses, um, the HBCU campuses, have really responded well to the changes in the environment and are, are constantly upgrading and trying to make sure that these campuses stay competitive um, with everyone else so that when we come out from an HBCU as a graduate, we know we can compete with anybody anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's very true. So also, what inspires you to become a writer? I'm very lucky in that I always knew I was a writer. Even when I was a little kid, I used to tell stories. I have a big sister who's two years older than I am. And I used to stand in my crib when I was a little tiny kid. I mean, I was still in the crib, so I must have been about two. Um, and lean over the side of the crib and tell stories to my sister. And then when she learned how to read, I realized that kids could also read and write. I knew grown-ups could. I never knew kids could. <laughs> so I made her teach me how to read and write when I was four. Mm -hmm. And I started writing little stories in notebooks. My grandfather would give me these little spiral notebooks notebooks like you get at the CVS mm -hmm. um, with little pencils and I would write my stories and I always did it. I was the kind of kid who after Thanksgiving dinner you know I would put on a play with my cousins and mm -hmm. all of that. So I always knew and I think that really is a great advantage mm -hmm. because some people want to write and they always say I want to be a writer, I want to be a writer, but they can't give themselves permission to actually do it, mm -hmm. you know, to do the work that you have to do and to take the time that you need to do it. And since I knew so young that this is really what I wanted to do, tell stories, that I was able to, to construct my life around making sure that I had the time to do that. You know, I would take jobs that I knew I didn't have to really invest my heart and soul in mm -hmm. because I knew I wanted that for my other job, mm -hmm. which was writing. It wasn't paying me any money, mm -hmm. but that was the job I really wanted to do so that that I was able to to really balance those things I think in a way that was easier for me because that was the only thing I, I ever wanted to do was to be a working writer. Okay. Do you feel like your upbringing um, inspires a lot of your novels and plays? Oh, I do. Absolutely. My, my parents were very much involved in the civil rights movement and the black arts movement. They were very community oriented people so that we always had, my father ran for office, my father was a minister, always had meetings at the church, always had demonstrations, all of that. We were very much involved in that. It's just a part of life. So I think that most of my work is very deeply rooted in community in trying to say, you know, whatever the problem is, if we all get together, we can fix it. So that I'm sure that came from the kind of upbringing I I had. All right, and lastly, what is your favorite positive saying that you would give to young writers? You can do it. Mm -hmm. You can do it. And I think that's the big thing. Writers doubt themselves. All artists do. We doubt ourselves and we, you know, begin to think, well, maybe I'm not as good as I think I am. And we listen to people who doubt us and all of that. You know, I've been reading all these things about um, Bruno Mars at the at the uh, Super Bowl show mm -hmm. yesterday. And all these things saying, oh, he's too young. He can't do it. He doesn't know what he's doing and all that. And I don't think he ever let any of that 
permeate his thinking. Mm -hmm. So when he got to do it yesterday, to actually do the show, he was fabulous mm -hmm. because he had absolute confidence. And I think that that's such an important part of it, that you have to always have that voice in your head no matter what anybody else is saying, that's saying you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Oh, well, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Well, so nice, nice to meet you. you. Thank and you. And you have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you.